Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica. Today I'm doing empties. So usually my empties are very long videos and very big videos because I always have a lot of empties. I usually do empties when I can get to it. They fluctuate. Sometimes I use a lot, sometimes I don't use that much. Um, this time I used a lot and I waited a really long time, so this is going to be an extra long video. So, grab a snack, water, I'll definitely be needing water, I have it right next to me, and maybe coffee, tea, whatever you want, and uh, let's get started on empties videos, <laughs> on my empty video. Okay, so every single time I always do, if you're new here, then um, this is what I do. If you're a returning viewer <laughs> to my empties videos, you know that I buy Bath & Body Works candles. Um, so this first one is a sugared uh, snickerdoodle scent. This was not my favorite. This is from Holiday last year and not my fave the way it burned. It kind of got a little mucky towards the end, which is not my fave. Um, this is one of the only ones that's not one of the only ones. Every now and then I feel like Bath & Body Works will have that, but yeah, this one was... Uh, this one definitely got mucky towards the end, which is not my fave. Um, but other than that, usually I always buy them and I, and I like them. Sometimes I don't like the scent necessarily because I buy them online, so whatever. But um, usually I, I'll, I like the way they burn. Um, honeysuckle and Freesia. This was a springtime candle. And I really liked it. It burnt well. Um, it's strong. It's a very strong floral scent. So if you don't like floral, this is not for you. Uh, but yeah, both were... Well, this one was really, really good. Okay, and on to lotions. Um, again, Bath & Body Works lotion is what I use because that's the one that I like. I have two here from the same scent. It is the Vanilla Bean Noel. <laughs> These two, uh, they're completely <laughs> used up. Um, and yeah, I really like them. This is from Holiday last year and they're really, really good. One of my favorite scents. I buy this and Twisted Peppermint um, in bulk whenever, I, whenever holidays come around because I like to have them last me <laughs> a very long time. I like to... the scents that I love the most for Bath & Body Works are winter and fall scents, so I tend to buy a lot of that during that time, and I just finished my last of my winter holiday scents. These were the last two from last year, just in time for fall, so yeah, there you go love the lotions. Um, there's a reason I keep buying it. Okay, so that is a body care. Let's go on to... Hmm. Let's do hair care next. So I have two dry shampoos. Batiste is what I always, always, always rebuy. I have this really massive bottle. I have more of these massive bottles. And blush, I have it in the scent blush. Um, it's a floral and flirty scent. And yeah, this is one of my favorite scents. It doesn't smell like baby powder, which is nice, but it's not overly perfumey. Um, I mean, there's a scent, and it's strong, but it's not overly like perfumey. So, yeah, this is what I usually buy. I have another one I'm working on. I'm pretty sure I have another one as well. I buy them in bulk, so that way, because I buy them from Ulta Beauty, I don't usually buy from Ulta Beauty. So, yeah. And then I got this from my hairdresser. I used this while I was traveling. It's the R & Co. Death Valley Dry Shampoo. Um, this was really nice. I have really oily hair, though. I felt like I needed to use a lot of this. Um, so this was kind of like one to two uses. So, yeah, not my fave as far as um, really soaking up the oils, but it worked while I was traveling, and I was appreciative to get this. It was completely free, so my hair just, just gave it to me. So I'll definitely take free dry shampoo any day. Oh, if you... That one's probably really good, too, if you have... Um, if you feel like your hair gets really, really dry from dry shampoo, because the Batiste one definitely, feel, I feel like it can get very gritty and very drying, um, unfortunately. However, it's the cheapest one that I found that like works pretty good, so I use it. Um, but yeah, if you feel like your hair um, doesn't get as oily as much, that one's probably a good one for you. The next thing I have is my Christophe Robin. Um, shampooing purifiant. Um, this was okay. Um, I really liked it for... Hmm, I liked it. It did a good job. However, I remember from Sephora it was pretty expensive. I was using the Verb shampoo and conditioner for a while and then I decided to change it up and get different shampoo and conditioners to try and see what's out there. And I'm back to my Verb shampoo and conditioner because uh, it's pretty cheap and um, 
well, for Sephora, I still get at Sephora. It's pretty cheap for a high-end shampoo, um, and it, it does the job well. Um, so, yeah, this was good. It was great, but um, I, have, I have a cheaper option out there. Okay, so next, let's see. Next, we have my Purity Made Simple by Sephosophy. Wow. Philosophy. This is what I take off, or use to take off my makeup. Um, and I use it and repurchase it. This is a repurchase many times over. And yeah, I like it. It does a good job. It is drying. For those of you who have really dry skin, maybe not the best because it does kind of strip a little bit, but it takes everything off. I wear a lot of makeup, so it takes everything off. off. It really helps me. Next, I have this Laneige Fresh Calming Toner. It says for sensitive skin. Um, I agree. It definitely helps. I really, really, really like this. I am using a different toner It's right now. It's a repurchase. It's the Fresh Rose Toner. And I like that, but I think I like this one better. So I might be repurchasing the Laneige. Um, from here on out. I have another toner that I received from like my mom and like a couple other ones, but this is a good bio, a viable option for a repurchase. Next we have this BioPeel Gauze Peeling Lemon Neogen Dermatology. I'm not sure what the brand was. I think the brand is Neogen Dermatology. But yeah, these were like um, like acidic pads that you put on your face and then you, after cleansing, and then um, you wash it away, and it's supposed to help uh, revitalize the skin and like have a faster turn turnover. Um, these, the last time I had the green ones, I think they were cucumber, this one I tried the lemon, I think I like the cucumber ones better, but this was nice, not my fave, I feel like if I were to repurchase again it would be the green ones, however now Whenever I first started using the green ones, I was like, this was, it was so good, I really saw a difference. Um, these ones I didn't. I don't know if I will see a difference again with the green ones. We'll see. Um, but it's really hard for me to put this into my routine. Sometimes I just, I forget to use them, so that might be an issue. So, yeah, I, I feel like it might be a me problem, but we'll see. Okay, so I have two of these mini masks from Peter Thomas Roth. I have the Cucumber Gel Mask, which I've already used a full one of these. Um, I got these in a gift set for Christmas, I think a year, maybe two years ago. It was like a bunch of them, I think it was like five, and these were the last two in there. In them. Um, the Cucumber one, like I said, I've used a full one of them. It's a nice cooling mask, it helps to detoxify while also hydrating, which for those of you who have acne skin, sometimes acne sensitive skin, um, you know that, well, acne sensitive skin and maybe drier skin, you know that when you use acne treatments, usually it's pretty drying on the skin and then your skin is just so dry it hurts almost. So yeah, having something like this is um, really helpful. I'm definitely thinking this would be definitely something that I would repurchase. Um, it's, it's just really helpful to have something that's both detoxifying and hydrating. Um, and, and it works <laughs> on top of that. The next thing here is my Peter Thomas Roth 24 Karat Gold Mask. Um, this was... it's supposed to firm. I don't necessarily know if I need firming at this point. But it's really fun to do because it, it is a gold mask. <laughs> but uh, I know it's pretty expensive as well, so not worth the money in my opinion. Um, because it, I don't feel like I need it, so I feel like this is just something that wasn't meant for me. I know I won't have to repurchase it, at least anytime soon. Um, I have faith in Peter Thomas Roth, Roth masks that they work because with the sample of five they all worked and did what they said. Um, this one I didn't see really a big difference in but I also don't think that I was in um, the market for a firming mask so maybe it was just a me thing. <laughs> okay next I have two serums. I use uh, Skinnyx serums. And this was the Vitamin B3 Serum. I didn't really see a difference on it. I don't think that this was a serum for me. I don't really know what vi Vitamin C, or no, Vitamin B3 Serum is supposed to do. So um, I'm a bad consumer because I don't really, didn't really know what it was supposed to do. I think I was trying to use it and see, but yeah, it wasn't for me. And then I have a Collagen Serum. This really helped with firming, I feel like, which I just said I didn't need firming, but it actually, I saw a difference with this. So that's interesting. But yeah, I did like the collagen one, so there you go. But I love the Skin Ink line. Um, I feel like it always says um, it always says what it says it's going to do. So I um, these are tried and true 
as far as the line itself, the individual's um, serums can be debated. So I have three different moisturizers. The first one that I used up is this Caudalie um, Vino Source. I use this during the day. I really, really like it. I have gotten many a sample of this. I um, repurchased this. This is a second repurchase, I believe, and I believe I'm going to try and repurchase um, more of it. I'm trying something else right now, um, just because this is pretty expensive, but and I like to kind of change it up, but this is something that has tried and true for me, and I really think that I should stick to this, <laughs> even though I want to try new things. I still want to try new things, but I think that I need to repurchase this very soon. Um, it, it hydrates, but it's not too heavy, um, and... Um, yeah, it's great uh, daytime serum or daytime creams because it really sinks into the skin and doesn't leave it very like oily and stuff like that, which is great when you have to put makeup over it. The next thing I have is this Rose Deep Hydration Face Cream from Fresh Cosmetics, and I um I mean it was good. It was very hydrating. However, for daytime uses, it didn't sink into the skin really really fast. It's not like a light moisturizer. It definitely is a heavier moisturizer. The next thing I have is this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Barrier Cream. It's supposed to strengthen and balance and hydrate. And um, it says it's safe for sensitive skin. Really nice. Again, however, compared to Caudalie, it's uh, still a thicker formula and it takes a minute to sink into the skin, um, which again, for daytime use, may not be ideal. Okay, I have two kind of miscellaneous things. This is the Beauty Blender Liquid Cleanser. I love it. It helps to clean my Beauty Blender. This is what I use to clean the actual Beauty Blender itself. I also use the Bar Beauty Blender Cleanser for like my brushes because I find that is a little bit easier. But this is great for the Beauty Blender cleanse Beauty Blender itself <laughs> or any makeup sponge itself. And yeah, I really really like this. I think it does a good job of cleaning my Beauty Blender and I've repurchased it. I have this little I don't even know. I think this was Coconut Snowflake, but it was like a little hand sanitizer from Bath and Body Works. I got this as a gift from one of my coworkers, and it was really helpful because, well, as a server, you're constantly touching people's blah blah blah. I wash my hands, but it was nice to have this out every now and then just to uh, put it on, and it had a nice strong scent. Every time I put it on, people would be like, "What's that smell? It smells so good!" And I was like, "This." Yeah, there you go. Again, very much a fan of Bath and Body Works. I don't know if I would purchase any of these for myself. Maybe I will. A nice gift to use, and I enjoyed using it while I had it. Next thing here are two nail polishes. This is my NARS top coat. Unfortunately, they do not make this anymore. At least I can't find it. I looked on NARS website. Website. I looked on Nordstrom, Sephora. Couldn't find it anywhere, so I think this is Dunzo. This was one of my favorite. It was really expensive. However, I'm using a Sally Hansen one. Um, it's pretty good as well, um, but... Yeah, I'm sad to see that this is gone, however, it did force me to go and try other top coats, and the Sally Hansen one is doing really good. This was like $20, and that one I think was maybe, I think less than $10, I can't remember 100%, but definitely almost 100% positive that it was less than $10, so definitely helping me out. Okay, and then I have this Revlon nail polish in Hot for Chocolate. And it was a nice color, very deep, 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 deep brown, almost black. Um, and yeah, it was nice. It was a good uh, nail polish. Okay, on to the most exciting part of everything. It is the makeup empties time. So let's start with our primers. I have three primers, if you can believe it. Um, two are deluxe size samples, so it's not as exciting, but you know, um, still progress. I have this Cover FX Blurring Primer. Um, not my, I mean, it was okay. I got this in a BoxyCharm, so I didn't pay a bunch of money for it. However, I know it is very expensive. Um, I feel like I don't necessarily really need blurring all that much. So, I mean, it was decent. It was fine. Um, and that's that. Maybe if blurring is your issue, go for it. It didn't disturb my makeup, so that's always good. You know, it wasn't awful. However, it was just okay, in my opinion. Next, I have this... Dutch Brandt Pores No More Refining Primer. I really like this one. I like the scent on it. It felt refreshing on it as well, and I think it did help with longevity. I don't know about blurring. Again, I don't know if I really need blurring. Well, I mean, it says Pores No More, so it's supposed to be a pore refiner, not necessarily blurring, but I'm pretty sure 
blurring and pore refiner are basically the same thing. So yeah, I don't know how much this would cost as full size. Um, obviously this is a teeny tiny sample that I got in like a beauty offer or beauty reward or whatever thing. So yeah, I liked it. Don't know if I would ever purchase it. I know Dr. Pratt tends to be pretty expensive. So I have this Estee Lauder, the Smoother Universal Perfecting Primer. Tiny, tiny little sample size. Um, this actually lasted a really long time. However, again, all of these are like kind of like blurring primers that I've like taken up. Not necessarily something that I think I really need. So yeah, it was just a silicone based primer. Nothing ultra special about it. But yeah, if you guys have um, <clears throat> any of these things helped you out more than they helped me and why, tell us why in the comments, please. Because, um, you know, just because it, it didn't... Um, I'm not wowed by it doesn't mean it didn't help someone else out. Like I said, I don't necessarily feel like I need smoothing and blurring and pore refining uh, per se. This foundation, I use my IT CC Oil Free Matte Foundation, or it's a CC cream technically, with SPF 40. I'm in the shade Fair, repurchased twice over, honestly. Um, and yeah, I've been using this over and over again. Um, this is what I've been using, and I like it a lot. Okay. Oh, so the next round is powder. So, this was a journey. First, I believe, I believe this was first. I used my Cover FX Perfecting Setting Powder. Um, wasn't wowed by it. Um, I think this is, yeah, Translucent Light. Wasn't wowed by it. Not my favorite. It didn't really, like, help much of anything. Like, uh, it mattified me. I used, I had to use a lot to mattify myself and then um, in the mornings and then it got really oily very quickly so um, not what I need I feel like I need to get matte and stay matte I'm not someone who likes to blot a lot um, it's just I feel like I end up getting too busy to do that which yeah it's again kind of like a what powder is gonna sit best for me but yeah so not my favorite didn't really like it didn't repurchase I don't think I mean it wasn't bad but I, I wouldn't repurchase then I ended up getting this setting powder in Invincible setting powder, sorry, Invincible setting powder for Super Goop. It doesn't say that there is a shade, at least I can't, I can't see it, but it has SPF 45, which really intrigued me. However, there is a very tiny, tiny amount in here. Um, if you take this off, you get this little uh, brush. I never used the brush. I took it off, and then I just dumped the powder into the uh, Cover FX powder on um, container. Yeah, I love this, but it's so expensive for what it is and how much they give you. They give you, I think, like point something ounces. Let's see. 0.15 ounces or 1.15 ounce. Um, so yeah, there's not much in here. I went through it way too fast. Um, perfect powder for me. However, <laughs> I can't afford to keep it. So and keep doing it. The next I have is this L'Oreal Infallible. Infallible? Pro Sweep and Lock Translucent Setting Powder. It was a white um, setting powder. I, this, <laughs> okay, so this mattified me and kept me matte throughout the whole day. However, it also showed off lots of fine lines. It made me look very dry, not necessarily just matte. Um, so I feel like kind of like a little bit of a Goldilocks right now. But um, yeah, so this did what I wanted. However, it also made me look like uh, very old and dry and not not my favorite sort of thing so um yeah this doesn't work for me either it's a cheaper option option from the for the cheaper option from the drugstore so that's good however uh it, yeah didn't work i have this clinique fresh bloom color all over in zero peony there was like a highlight shade and a blush shade i just swirled them all together on my brush this was in my project 50 pan and it was a sample size blush. It was very, very beautiful. I liked the color a lot. Um, this is an older, like, gift with purchase type of thing, so I don't know if they still have this available to purchase, but if they did, um, it, it's good. I recommend it. It's pretty, but yeah, who knows. Okay, I have this. It Cosmetics Brow Power um, Brow Pencil, I think, in Universal Taupe. Got this in a BoxyCharm. I thought it was okay, not worth purchasing. It has a like thicker type of um, shape to it. 
and it's like an oval, it's an oval shape. So I need something like a brow definer type of thing. And it also comes with a spoolie at the end. I never once used a spoolie because I have my own spoolie. I don't know why, but it's just easier for me, I think. I don't know. I probably should have used it, but I didn't. Anyways, yeah, not my favorite. I wouldn't repurchase it. Uh, it's just not the product for me. However, maybe if you have thicker brows, need just help filling in and less like precision, this might be good for you. I have this, uh, oh my gosh, okay. Everything is written off, <laughs> wiped off of this, unfortunately, but it was a Lorac eye primer. I thought it worked well, but not my favorite. I wouldn't repurchase it. It came with, uh, a Lorac palette a while ago. So yeah, I have this. I'm still using, there's another one actually that I have and I'm still using it. So yeah, I would not terrible to where I had to throw it away, um, but not my favorite. Next, I have this Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. I really like this a lot as a setting spray. I think I will definitely repurchase it. Right now, I'm using the uh, Urban Decay All Nighter and I think I found that I don't really like that that much. Um, my favorite is still my MAC Fix Plus setting spray. However, I don't feel like <sighs> I feel like I go through the Mac Fix Plus setting spray really quickly because I also use that to saturate my brushes for eyeshadow. So I feel like I go through it too quickly to constantly repurchase it. This is a really good deal because there is four ounces in it, and I think everything else you get like under four ounces. I think like three ounces or so. So um, yeah, I really like this, and I'm pretty sure it's a little bit cheaper as well than the other ones. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. But I really, really like this. It was hydrating, it felt nice, it smelled nice. It was just um, a nice feeling and it left a nice look to setting your, your makeup with. I never use it as a setting pri or a priming spray or anything, but I, I use that as my setting spray. And this is long awaited and so exciting. My Modern Renaissance. Let's open this up one more time, get a nice good look. Now, I recommend checking out my Modern Renaissance, or my Pan Up Palette Finale, and honestly, the whole series, if you have time or want to binge or whatever, this was an up and down sort of situation. Basically, I don't re recommend this palette at all, and it is for safety reasons. Mine rusted. Um, of course, others have not rusted, so um, take that with you will, what you will, but of course, this is also my opinion, my experience. Um, mine rusted and it seemed unsafe to me. It did not have to do with me wetting my brush because it happened on matte shades. It didn't have to do with me um, uh, repressing powder because it happened on powders that I didn't repress. So, and I keep my stuff in a dry, cool, uh, dark environment, so it shouldn't have done that. I don't know what happened. I think it's the formula. This has a six month expiration date. I use this for over two years, so. Um, not over two years, just under two years, actually. So, you know, I'm using it past the technical expiration date. However, six months is a very small expiration date, and I think we all know that eyeshadows tend to have expiration dates that, for the most part, you can kind of, you know, use afterwards. Um, of course, that's at your own risk. So, yeah. Um, if you were to buy it, I mean, listen, the color story is beautiful. If you were to buy it, I definitely recommend buying it and using it for six months and tossing it. After that, this is a six-month palette. It is not one to stay in the collection for years and years and years. Maybe it is if it's um, if you're not planning on hitting pan anytime soon, uh, which there are collections out there that, that don't do that. As a project panner, I like to hit pan and see all the pan completely exposed. It just makes me feel better that I'm getting my money worth, money's worth out of it. So, money worth out of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It was, it was an ups and downs type of palette, Panda palette, but uh, I love it, <laughs> but I also feel it's unsafe, so yeah. And again, uh, this is something that was my experience. Other people have different experiences. Um, maybe the formulas change, maybe they change the pans. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, my version of it was not something that I recommend. That's going to be it for the empties videos. Thank you. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope that this was valuable to you. As always, please, if you have differing opinions on products or uh, products that um, worked for you and didn't for me or did for you and didn't for me or you have the same opinion as me or experience as me, I don't even know. Anyways, if you've used these products, let us know what you have, um, you have experienced and all of that jazz. 
and I feel so delusional right now, and I think it's coming across because I've been talking for way too long. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Have a good day. Bye.